Hi, I'm Dr. Mila Brujic, and today we're joined with Dr. Art Epstein, and we're going to be talking about the medical side of optometry on the Optometric Insights Show. Dr. Epstein, um, what an honor to have you here. First and foremost, thank you for your time. Thank you for being here. You know, I, I remember the first time I met you, it was in a SECO um, exhibit hall. It was 2005. I walked up to you and I said, I know you. And I remember your face, you kind of looked and you, you, you stared and said, oh. And I said, no, I, I, I see you every Saturday morning on Optometric Physician. And that was really, the I think, my introduction to you. But certainly the profession has really come to know you through that email channel that you have. I, I guess the first thing I want to start with is share with us what the impetus behind that was, why you started that. And I mean, I think it's 15, 20 years later, you're, you're still doing that column. It's just, it's awesome. Uh, tell us more about it. Hey, thanks, Mila. And uh, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. It's, uh, it, it's been an interesting journey with that. Uh, you know, the first thing uh, I, should, I should apologize for is most people don't know this, but I'm kind of a relatively shy private person. You know, you probably say, what are you? Are you kidding? Because, um, you know, I'm literally on stage more than I'm home when, you know, things are uh, normal. Uh, but, you know, I'm always surprised when people come up to me and it's like, uh, you know, like, what, you know, what's this? But uh, it was it actually was one of the great moments in my career actually meeting you and watching you grow into uh, the force uh, for good in optometry that you've become. So uh, to answer your question, uh, you know, I started out sort of, in an interesting role, uh, I, I was originally headed for research. Uh, you know, my brother, who's uh, I guess a resident uh, in uh, internal medicine at the time, or cardiology, he was mul multiple boarded. I went to visit him uh, in my uh, junior year of college, and he and I said, "I'm going to get a PhD in neuropsychology." And he said. Are you out of your mind? He said, you'll be working with rats for the rest of your life in some basement. You'll be miserable. Uh, and, and I don't like your girlfriend either. Very, very, very strong sense of encouragement from your family. Continue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Now, he, actually, he was a great brother. He was, he was very protective of me. Uh, and, and he was right. And uh, anyway, I ended up in optometry. But, you know, my background was always very strongly medically focused. You know, that was just the nature of the family. We watched Ben Casey together and Dr. Kildare and, you know, all those medical shows. We really got into it. You know, get into fights over diagnosis and, you know, here and there. Uh, and uh, anyway, I, I got through optometry school. Uh, and, um, you know, optometry was a little too refractive for me, just, you know, for you know, who I was. And at that point, medical optometry was just coming to the fore, you know, uh, yeah. uh, you know, and it was it was so it was it was always an area of interest of mine. It, it drove me uh, into contact lenses because they're I guess more medical than other aspects. So I became very uh, you know um, I guess focused on medically special uh, specialty contact lenses, medically necessary contact lenses. And, and one day, I, you know, I started doing a lot of uh, writing. You know, again, I enjoyed writing, and, and uh, I came up with this idea for uh, a, a journal, and it took shape as an electronic journal. Uh, and uh, I decided that it really should have a medical focus, which was really starting to catch on in optometry. You know, this was 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I intentionally named it uh, Optometric Physician because it was kind of an in-your-face, you know, to uh, some of our detractors, you know, who I, I won't mention. Uh, and the goal was to focus on the medical, but also to be uh, a, a channel for advocacy, you know, for the profession to you know, uh, express news that, you know, would otherwise not necessarily get there through conventional print, uh, and basically to encourage people to do things that they were capable of doing in, in the medical domain. That's the, that's the interesting thing with that, that column, Art. You always seem to have your finger right on the pulse of, of everything that's very hyper-relevant at the time, meaning I open it up, and I still, to this day, Saturday mornings, I open it up. You know you get the text messages is on the good ones and the bad ones. But, uh, but, but, but regardless of what I think, you, you're always on the pulse of what is really kind of affecting the clinician. And the thing that I'm even thinking about in my mind before I open it up, and I think he's got it again, like you are right on the pulse of everything. It's, it's interesting too, because you've had a unique career. You, this is kind of your second practice. That's been a big transition for you. Tell us how the medical side of optometry has played a pretty significant role in this 
second practice or second career for you essentially yeah, that's 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 a, a great question and and yeah thanks for thanks for for saying that you know again people sometimes you know write notes and, and they'll say gee i just want to thank you for what you're doing and you know uh, and you probably get tons of these and the answer is i really don't get tons of them and, and actually sometimes i wonder you know is anyone out there <laughs> anyone actually listening but uh, trust us we're reading art keep writing because we're we're reading <laughs> well you know it's i mean sometimes i get i get messages that you know you know literally bring me to tears they're they're very uh you know emotionally charged and very encouraging and, and you know if i could make a difference in, in someone's life and help guide them you know something that they're happy with and more productive so you know it's, it's actually interesting i was i've been the luckiest guy in the world you know you you, you asked me how i'm connected i've had the good fortune of traveling around you know the, the chicken dinners that we as speakers do uh, you know, some of it see it as you know, some of us see it as you know, earning a living. You know, speaking, you know, a side gig, uh, you know, uh, if you will. I actually see it as an opportunity of interacting with colleagues in different parts of the country. So I'm always getting ideas from people. So you know, most of the things I write come from you know, from other people's experiences and what's going on in in, in different parts of the country. Uh, I practice for many years in New York, as you know, probably everyone could tell from my uh, from my New York accent. You have a New York accent. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, it's actually south of uh, south of Des Moines, but it's uh, <laughs> when when I it, it, don't ask me to say coffee or my daughters, but other than that, I have no accent whatsoever. <laughs> that and kids me all the time. Uh, so I happen to be very lucky. I, I found an incredible young lady who happened to be an optometrist, uh, and we ended up getting married. And she is uh, entrepreneurial and also an amazing clinician. Uh, and very detail oriented, and I'm entrepreneurial, but I'm not detail oriented. I'm big picture oriented, and I started missing seeing patients. She was teaching in the school, and I, you know, I said one day, "Hey, you know, maybe we should just open a practice." You know how expensive it is to open practices these days, so I, you know, I said it's going to be a big risk. Everyone said, "What are you crazy? You know, this is a time to sell. Don't buy." Uh, so we opened a practice uh, in a medical building on a hospital campus. Uh, invested a lot of money, more money than I ever spent on any one thing uh, before, all high tech. Um, and um, I decided that I wanted to focus on ocular surface disease. And she was very understanding. And uh, I didn't even want to put in a dispensary. Of course, she's more rational than I am. And said, of course, we have to put in a dispensary. Well, you're out of your mind. Uh, so we put in a, a small dispensary and focused primarily on medical <clears throat> took emergency call, which was largely non-existent in Phoenix when we opened uh, seven, eight years ago. Uh, and we built uh, a, uh, a very complex medical specialty practice that I called the cradle of misery in Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> we get referrals from ophthalmology. Uh, we get referrals from many of our colleagues, you know, which I'm super grateful for. And my days are filled just with dry eye and ocular surface disease and related things, except for an occasional emergency. So I like keeping my fingers in it. So, uh, and uh, I think the most important message there uh, is you can do it, and we've been incredibly successful at it. That's so, Art. It's it's interesting, you know. You so I would consider you one of the great ones, my friend. And and it's interesting. You look at things a little bit differently at a time when, like you said, people were advising you that this really isn't the time to to be buying and creating your own practice. This is a better time to be selling. You said, well. If everybody else is selling, I'm gonna I'm gonna create it, and and I and I love that about you because you you even in, in a lot of our interactions, you're always kind of challenging the status quo, and I think that's what people appreciate appreciate about you. You have a the ability to do it in a way that's very respectful to the individuals that you're communicating with, but also very thoughtful, and uh, I think that's sometimes what we need. So, Art, I, I think that 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 story is cool. I, I absolutely love it. We, we're running short on time here. So if you could think of like maybe one or two things for, for the viewers or the listeners that you could kind of give them as take homes on um, really medical optometry and what they need to be focusing on now and also in the next one, three, five years to really kind of optimize their chances of success in really this new healthcare platform. Yeah, that's, that, that's great. And, and, and I, I appreciate the opportunity. I think, you know, the most important things that I can share uh, are you need to really believe in yourself. I, I think if, if you think you can do it and you're methodical about it, you'll end up being successful. You, you will end up doing it. I love optometry. I love optometrists because they're some of the nicest people I've ever met. They're kind, they're caring, they're patient focused. 
Uh, they often put the patients ahead of themselves, which is almost unique in healthcare. Uh, and they don't realize how much they're capable of. We underestimate ourselves, and, and this is not a time to underestimate ourselves. I, I think the world is changing very rapidly. We certainly see this literally every day. Uh, and in addition to the world itself changing, uh, optometry has more and more opportunities, but more and more uh, risks and potential pitfalls. So we can't stay where we were. It's not a safe place. Traditional refractive eye care, I think, is under siege and will be increasingly so. And medical eye care, especially in areas like uh, ocular surface disease, dry eye, I think you know there, there's 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 massive massive opportunity. Uh, the other thing is, don't be afraid to pick up and, and change your life. You know, for me, I picked up and I left New York. New York was not an easy place to practice. You know, you asked me how we went medical. I could never have done in, in the New York uh, area, in the New York City area, certainly, and probably not in New York State. Uh, what I've managed to accomplish out in Arizona, which has you know better regulations. I hope one day that all of uh, our colleagues practice at the same level throughout the country. Uh, but for now, you have to be you know kind of mindful, mindful of that. So uh, don't stay, don't stay still. Make every day a day to learn something. You know that's another thing that I think is the greatest thing about our new practice. I go in and I come back the next morning and I tell our young associate, who happens to be an Ohio, uh, an Ohio boy, I said I just figured something out and you know I blurred it out. You know I I thought about it in the shower or as I was falling asleep. You know it, uh, something came to me where I just discovered a whole new concept. We made massive progress in understanding dry eye this year because we think about it and talk about it. I love that aspect of it and learning is a big part of it. And anybody can do what I do. You know, uh, you talk about me as being one of the greats. I'm just a guy who grew up in the Bronx in a one bedroom apartment. Anybody can do this. They just have to set their mind to do it and just don't say no, don't say I can, just do it. Art, as always, um, I think myself, uh, personally speaking, and uh, I think the audience um, at large feels better, more empowered about themselves, just kind of hearing your, your inspirational story and uh, your words of wisdom. We appreciate you, Art. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being on the show. Um, everybody, thank you for, for joining us with Dr. Art Epstein talking about medical optometry, and make sure you subscribe to our podcast. Take care. Thanks, Real.